One of the most important and central concepts that everyone who is on the path of self-improvement must have. This is total ruthlessness towards yourself. You'll never see in nature a lamb, a hare that is tired of fighting for its life or has lost motivation while running away from a predator, lies down and gives itself up to be eaten. And a person, due to the multi-component nature and complexity of his psyche and his complex structure, is capable of betraying his nature in a way that no other living creature can. But this is just a special case. Man has enormous free will, exactly the same in the opposite direction. Not one living creature is capable of showing such a will to live as a person. And what do we need to understand about self-pity? Self-pity is the main limiting quality. Every time we don't finish, don't give enough. In fact, we meet the next one. I felt bad. I felt unpleasant. I don't feel good. I don't have the strength to stay in this state. I want to stop. What's the matter here? If at this moment, you keep it in your consciousness and in your head that right now, you are doing these actions, this work, in order to never be in a bad state again, then you'll be able to get over it. Self-pity either exists or it doesn't. You cannot be 40 minus 60 ruthless towards yourself. Either yes or no, either a person is responsible for himself and his life, or he is not responsible Self-pity can only arise in the space of the illusion that life is endless. There is one very simple exercise, and it consists in the fact that when you feel heavy, scared, it seems that you have run out of strength. You need to put yourself into a state in which you can imagine and believe in the picture that what you are doing now is the very last action in your life. After that, nothing will happen, nothing. So you did something and it didn't work out, you lost, or something else. Remember the episodes of these actions and ask yourself, why didn't you give your best where you could? After all, there was still strength. Why did you feel sorry for yourself? And you felt sorry for yourself for the simple reason that you were afraid of falling without strength. I was afraid I would become so exhausted that I would die. Our whole life is a desire to accumulate energy and escape from death through exhaustion, exhaustion, or heat death. Fatigue is a precursor to heat death. If we take it as a belief that what I am doing now is the very last thing that will happen and heat death will happen in any case. This wisdom is written in the Code of Bushido, the samurai, that only the warrior who accepts defeat and death before the start of the battle wins. When you have accepted that you will die or be killed in any case, only then are your actions as accurate and timely as possible. For the simple reason that you are removing the mental reserve that is blocked in order to stop yourself from dying if anything happens. Self-pity is an illusory construction of a winning strategy within the framework of an endless life. When it seems to you that life is endless and you think that everything will be as always, you will always have the opportunity to return to these people, to these places, to these situations. In fact, every moment is unique and the situation changes. If at the age of 16, you didn't have a good, beautiful girl, a rich sex life, and at 70 years old, you start to feel grief, this will not change the quality of your life. Just like you didn't have a girlfriend when you were 16, you still don't have one. If your dad didn't give you a car when you were 10, just because you buy yourself a Ferrari at 70, you won't get a car in 10 years. We cannot compensate for the empty spaces in our lives by filling them with other things. All we can do is fill every moment we have. The cure for self-pity is to forcefully reduce the scale of life to this action. For example, you go to an exam or a job interview and fall into a stupor. And at this moment, you say to yourself, it doesn't matter to me whether they accept me or not. I'll die as soon as the interview ends. As soon as the interview ends, I die. My life ends. 
So I go and I lay out everything I have and do it boldly. And we can do this in everything, in battle, in business, in art, in science, in politics, in performance, in family, anywhere. For example, you are afraid to talk to your parents. You feel like you are shaking. You are nervous. You say to yourself, I'm walking now, talking. As soon as the conversation ends, I die. This technique allows you to negate feelings of shame, tension, and everything connected with it. Therefore, in order to start doing a huge amount of work, bursting with energy, doing everything accurately, doing everything in a timely manner, not doing empty things, you need to acquire absolute ruthlessness towards yourself. Absolute ruthlessness towards oneself is just a direct consequence of the awareness of one's mortality. When I go out to fight a person, I am not afraid of him, because the worst thing he can do to me is kill me. How can you scare me with something I know is guaranteed to happen to me? I know that I will die. And in fact, all your fear goes there. For example, I'll go to work. They won't hire me. I won't have money. I won't have anything to eat and I'll die of hunger. I will go to meet her. She will say that she does not want to live with me. She will not love me. I will not have children from her. I will not continue in time and space. My genetic code will disappear into eternity and I will die without a trace. I will die. Any fear you have. I will go on stage. I will not be applauded. I will be showered with rotten tomatoes. I will be ridiculed. I will leave in disgrace. I will be ostracized by society and I will die in exile. When you come to terms with the fact that sooner or later you will die, this is guaranteed. There will be nothing to scare you anymore. In fact, there is nothing to frighten a person except the threat of death. But if you already know that this will happen to you, the only thing you are afraid of is that you will smoke the sky all your life and will not do what you wanted. This will be the point where the fear of screwing up your life outweighs the fear of losing your life. And only then do you begin to freely do what you want. My friend, we can fix a lot in our lives at any moment. And only we can decide whether we want this or not. And while you're here, get yourself together. You can do it. Bye.